Even though one of the things we love about LEGO Castle is army building and big battles, many people also like to build medieval and fantasy worlds. So we're going to look at what peasant figures are out there to fill your worlds with. So here's every peasant figure from the LEGO Castle theme and from the LEGO CMF theme. There are a few different eras of LEGO Castle peasants. The first era is the Classic Peasants, which went from 1984 to 1990. During this era, there are three different styles of peasants that were used. Each of these styles have subgroups that they were used for. The reason I'm grouping them this way is because during this era, LEGO made a few different styles and then just switched out a few parts for different roles. First is the Blacksmith. He only came in one set, Blacksmith's Forge. He had black pants, a basic smiley face, covered by a peasant hood, and a yellow torso. Over the torso, he has a brown short plastic cape, which is used as a leather apron, which in my opinion was a very creative use of that part. The next style, I'm gonna call the Maiden. She is used as an innkeeper, princess, noblewoman, kind of any female character that they had during this era. In Maiden's cart, she has a basic smiley face, blue pants, white torso with necklace, and white cone hat. In Guarded Inn, she has the same look except a red cone hat, and also had a short blue cape. In Knight's Challenge, she used a red cone hat and white legs. The most unique version came in King's Mountain Fortress. This time, she used the first female printed head in LEGO Castle. Her torso has a necklace with a blue corset over a white top. She also used a blue slope without the bottom tube for her dress. Her torso also comes in green for the forest woman. The last style is the normal peasant. The basic look for this figure used a peasant cowl over a smiley face, with light gray tie shirt with black belt and purse that had blue arms. The torso is the same design used for Magisto and the Forest Men. We first see the peasant as a cart driver for the Crusaders and Supply Wagon. In this one, he uses light gray legs and a brown cowl. Next, we see him as a prisoner of the Lion Knights in Prison Convoy. This time, he has a black cowl and red legs. He uses the red legs again, but this time with long brown hair and Knight's Challenge. He then appears as a farmer with black hood and blue legs in Castle Minifigures. Lastly, he appears in Smuggler's Hayride with a black cowl and gray legs. The next era went from 1990 to 2006, and I'm going to call this the Dark Ages of Peasant Minifigures. From from 1990 to 2000, LEGO didn't make a single peasant. In 2001, LEGO did re-release Guarded Inn, which came with a maiden, but that was really it. 2002, LEGO made the Blacksmith Shop, which came with two peasants. The first is the Blacksmith, who has a big bushy mustache, black hair and legs, and an armor torso from Knight's Kingdom 1. This set also comes with a maiden. She uses the same head and dress as the Queen from Knight's Kingdom 1, except she has brown hair. After this, the next time we saw a peasant was in Knight's Kingdom 2, Miss Land's Tower. The Blacksmith has brown legs, legs, torso, hands, arms, and a gray beard. This is the laziest peasant attempt LEGO ever did. I mean, he does fit in with the rest of Knight's Kingdom too, but still. The King's Castle set from Knight's Kingdom 2 saw this attempt at a blacksmith and was like, challenge accepted, and gave us its own version of a blacksmith. He has an angry face covered by a black helmet and has a black torso, yellow arms, and short brown legs. I will say this was at least a bit better of an attempt than the other Knight's Kingdom 2 blacksmith. In 2007, Fantasy of Castle dropped, and it seemed like LEGO was still not going to fix the peasant problem. But then LEGO dropped two sets that pulled us speeding out of the dark age of peasant figures. From 2008 to 2012 was the first time we got a good and wide variety of peasants. Now a lot of designs from this era crossed over between Kingdoms and 2007 Castle, so I'm going to group like figures. Both LEGO Castle Advent Calendar and Medieval Market Village came with the same maiden. She has a tan torso with corset, and brown dress piece with white apron. Four of the figures use the same torso. It has a brown collar, rope belt with money pouch, and a few patches on a dark tan torso. This torso was used in Medieval Market Village for a peasant boy with short brown legs and long blonde hair. Also in that set came another peasant who had dark gray legs and dark tan hair. The hair piece is most well known for coming on Harry Potter and Young Anakin. Medieval Market Village also has an old peasant who uses this torso with dark brown arms. He also has a dark brown peasant hood and brown pants with a brown backpack. Another set that uses this torso with dark brown arms is the Lego Kingdom's Joust set. This child peasant has short brown legs and a dark brown peasant hood. Another figure that came in Medieval Market Village whose torso was reused a lot is this female peasant, who has a dark green dress with corset and dark orange belt. She also has a dress part that extends the printing. Now this version had dark brown hair with a dual side head, with a smile look on one side and a scared look on the other. In the Lego Kingdom's advent calendar came a very similar figure for a barmaid. The only difference is the head that is used. This torso is also used for the Dragon Kingdom Queen in the chest set, and 
looking for a handful of pirates. The last peasant from the medieval market village is the blacksmith. He has a gray bearded face with a dark brown peasant hood. Now his torso is reused for the blacksmith in the kingdom's advent calendar. It shows a brown tunic with string on the top of it that covers some chest hair. Overall this is a black apron and the torso uses yellow arms. In both sets this is paired with black legs. In the advent calendar they switched out the head to a smiley face with a brown beard. Kingdoms also had another blacksmith that came in blacksmith attack. This figure has a light gray tunic that is covered by a dark brown apron. Unlike many other figures on this list, he has printed brown legs that extend the apron. He has a dual side face with a brown beard, and has a black peasant hood that goes over it. Mill Village Raid came with three exclusive peasants. First is the child, who has a light gray torso covered by a sand green vest. He has short brown legs and long dark tan hair. The male peasant has a dark brown hood and brown legs. His torso is tan with a brown collar and a shoulder bag. The maiden peasant has a medium blue dress with brown corset. Her legs are a dress piece with a tan apron on it. She has a dual printed head that's smiley on one side and is annoyed on the other, which is covered by dark orange hair. Throughout these two themes, there are a few different jesters, which technically could be a part of the royal court, but I think they're just good peasants to have. They all sort of have a similar design and always have a jester's hat. We first saw him in the Lego Castle advent calendar, but he also came in Drawbridge Defense with a different head. This jester served the Crown Knight faction. He is red and blue with a belt that has the Crown Knight's crest. The Lion Kingdom jester is red and white with a belt that has a lion crest on it. The head is very happy on one side and crying on the other. This version comes in the Court Jester set, and in the Kingdom's chest set which he has a quiver in. There's also a female version of this figure that comes in the Fairy Tale and Historical Minifigure set. In 2014, we got the third style of Jester in CMF Series 12. This one is the most unique because of its purple and bright light orange color scheme. His collar and hat also had gold in it. Unlike the other two, he came with two playing cards. Sadly, 2013 Castle dropped us right back into another dark age of peasant figures. Before we move on to the final era, if this video has helped, please hit that like button. And hey, if you're new to the channel and want more LEGO Castle content, hit that subscribe button. This brings us right into the modern era of Castle. And I'm going to call this the golden age of LEGO peasant castle figures. Some might disagree and say it's the era before, but personally I think we've gotten some of the best castle peasants that we've ever seen during the modern era of LEGO Castle. This era was kicked off by the LEGO Ideas blacksmith set. The first is the blacksmith's wife, also called the Archer. She has a quiver, dark brown braided hair, and dual molded legs. She reuses a pirate torso from Barracuda Bay. This torso is a green vest that covers a white shirt. Out of all the pirate torsos, this is definitely one of the better ones for a Lego to use for a castle figure, but I don't think this is the best torso to use for a Lego castle peasant. This isn't the only time we've gotten a pirate torso in this era of Lego castle. In the 3-in-1 castle, we got a blacksmith, which I will put heavy air quotes around. This figure used a basic blue striped pirate torso with black legs. Unlike the archer, this torso is really not good for castle and is definitely the laziest peasant from this era. The idea's blacksmith set also came with a blacksmith who has a dark orange beard and a ponytail hairpiece. He has a dark tan torso with a brown apron that extends onto sand blue legs. This torso and leg combo have been reused a bunch of times, including a barista, blacksmith Kai, and lodge owner. But it was also reused in the 90th anniversary Lion Knight's Castle for the baker. The baker has wavy dark brown hair and mutton chops. This wasn't the only peasant that came with the castle. We also got a new maiden peasant. She has a white headdress that was originally used for the mummy queen and Egyptian warrior. Her dress is dark green with a brown belt. The peasant child in this set has dark brown coiled hair and dark blue short legs. His torso is blue with dark blue pinstripes and dark blue arms. Over all of that are magenta shoulder stripes and a magenta collar. Finally, it has a money pouch on a black belt. This torso actually first came in CMS Series 22 on the Troubadour. The Troubadour used legs that are dual molded and extended the pinstripe pattern. His head is actually the same head as the baker from the castle. He came with two gold coins and a loot. His hat is a blue forestman's hat with a magenta feather. The final peasant from the castle also also uses a blue cap. The farmer comes with an updated classic peasant torso in sand green. Finally, he had dark brown legs and a brown basket. This updated torso was reused in Medieval Town Square. The shieldsmith reuses the torso with dark tan legs and long dark brown hair. On top of the shieldsmith, Medieval Town Square came with five new peasant torsos. The first is the peasant boy who works in the cheese shop. He has a tan torso with dark orange arms and short dark brown legs. He uses a hat that was made for the dwarfs in the Snow White Cottage. The weaver sports a sand blue torso with dark orange arms. A belt runs across the bottom of his torso which contains a money pouch. He has a gray beard and gray wavy hair with dark blue legs. We also get an innkeeper in this set. She has a dark red dress with a tan belt that holds a money pouch. The carpenter is the fifth peasant in Medieval Town Square. Her torso is olive green with a belt around the waist. She has dark brown legs and her hair is the same blonde 
coiled hair that we got in the Viking village. The last peasant in this set is the tax collector who works for the queen from the castle. He is definitely top five peasant figures that we have ever gotten, but he could also be used for a nobleman. He has long orange hair and a thick orange beard. His torso is purple and drapes down to his legs, which are sand blue. To match his black collar, he wears a black cape. A figure that should definitely be added to the medieval town square is the goat herder from CMF series 25. He has a brown hood that covers a gray beard and a big mustache. He carries a stick and has a tan pack. His legs are dual molded with olive green and dark brown and has a money pouch hanging from a belt. Finally, his torso is green with a wool vest and a brown collar. He also came with a white goat. The final figure from this era came in the Viking village. The set came with a blacksmith that has amazing printing. She has a black torso with a dark red apron. Her legs are dark red and are heavily printed. She has dark orange hair that partly covers the headband. As of the time of me making this video, that's every LEGO Castle peasant we have gotten. Hopefully this helps you to be able to find some great figures and parts to build out your LEGO Castle world with. Or maybe this will just help you to build out a peasant army to overthrow a king. Because every figure should be army built.